Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my League Starter for Path of Exile 3.15 Expedition League. Now, unlike previous leagues where I usually make Righteous Fire builds, I will not be playing a Righteous Fire League Start, uh, mainly because of the massive nerfs targeted to Fire Damage Over Time Multiplier and Ailment Immunity. Uh, in a previous video I made, basically today you can go back and look at the Righteous Fire changes. Um, before I jump into my League Starter, I also do want to state that the most complicated build ever that I know a lot of you guys subscribe for has massively gotten nerfed as well. Um, I am not going to go over that right now. I can try to kind of elaborate it a little more on my stream tomorrow. Um, but this build has been hit massively. It's still playable, but it is his, like it has been massively nerfed because of the Arcane Surge interaction, the uh, ailment immunity uh, change for Hierophant, and on top of this, um, the change of Arcane Surge, but all for another time. Today, I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about Forbidden Rite Totems as Hierophant. Now, the reason why I wanted to play Forbidden Rite is, I don't know if you guys know this about me, I love skills that hurt yourself. I don't know why I'm such a masochist, but I love self-damaging skills. Death's Oath, Righteous Fire, Forbidden Rite, yeah? So, um, Forbidden Rite. Forbidden Rite is a skill gem. If we look over here, Forbidden Rite. Lobs an exploding projectile near the targeted location and extra projectiles towards enemies around you. The projectile deals chaos damage based on your life and energy shield. Casting this spell damages you. Now, a lot of players are concerned about the following. If I put this on a totem, does it use my value? If I put this on a trap, how does it work? So, simply put, Dark Pact and Righteous Fire are similar worded skills that work off of the associated totem and or trap. So example, if you put Righteous Fire on a totem, it goes off of the totem's values, not yours. Same thing with Dark Pact. So we're just naturally gonna assume Forbidden Rite is the exact same way. So the way this skill works is it fires one projectile and then up to seven extra projectiles by default, no skill gems, no plus to projectiles, right? When you are fighting a boss all by itself, you will get two projectiles because it will have one that is natural by default that you aim and one extra that homes in on the target. So let me use an example video here. I couldn't actually find the, this trailer, whatever they posted. So this guy Fuzzy uploaded it. Feel free to, you know, upload his video. So over here, I wanna give a nice little example. Right here, you can see the character goes in flame dashes and he goes to cast. So this, if you look at the character, the way the direction is facing, you can tell he has his mouse cursor over here. So this is where he aimed. This is going to be the automatic extra projectiles that come out of the skill. And you can kind of tell because watch. So you see how he has these three? He most likely has three additional projectiles, which is showcased right here. See how they're really close together and they're not spreading out like this? You can tell that these are coming out of the initial cast and they're not the extra projectiles that are coming out. Furthermore, you can also see that there's another one. So this right here was four projectiles, right? This is the initial one that he casted. These are the extra proj he has. And it seems that these are the extra ones that come out, coming out being right here, the fires extra projectiles at up to seven surrounding enemies. So if this is correct with, with how I assume it's gonna work, you are gonna wanna scale plus to projectiles, whether you're using LMP, GMP, or Reign of Splinters if you're a totem build, projectiles should be a very big damage increase to the skill itself. Um, to just kinda go back and play it in normal speed so you guys can see how it plays. Okay, now let me go ahead and jump into the theory behind my character. As you guys know, I like to kind of go a little extra on pretty much everything I play because I just don't really have fun playing, you know, very basic things. So, I have decided to do an interesting take. Um, it is not a Soul Mantle self flagellant or whatever the jewel is that people use. A lot of people like to go Soul Mantle because they get a 7 link because it gives them Spell Totem. Uh, and then on top of Spell Totem, you get the uh, increased life. And on top of the increased life, you uh, have curses that are, you know, applied on your head. So people usually do two times Kikizuru rings or they'd use the Maven Helm to avoid curses. I'm going to try something completely different. 
So, as you can tell by the gear, this is not SSF friendly, this is not League Stark friendly, but this is not what you're using right away. This is what you're transitioning into. So this is going to be a power charge stacking Hierophant. Um, it's going to be non-crit to start, and it's most likely going to move into crit um, as I get more gear. The reason why I say non-crit to start, I just don't like playing crit characters as League Start. It feels just so much better to not have to go crit, right? So, let me explain the whole theory behind how this works. So, as a Hierophant, I love Conviction of Power because it gives you survivability and it gives you defense at the same time. Four minimum endurance charges is 16% physical mitigation, one of the hardest stats to get. Four power charges doesn't really do anything for us, but hold that thought. Four power charges, five power charges, six power charges, a potential anoint, seven power charges, void battery, eight power charges. Let's assume we're not going to have two, right? My amulet will be Irladex, that's nine power charges. And then on top of the nine power charges, I'll just put this one here for now, um, the helmet can have power charge as warlord, that's 10 power charges. Corrupted could be 11 power charges, and another void battery could be 12 power charges. Well, why power charges? What do power charges do for me? Well, let's explain. Over here, assuming you have a Cloak of Defiance, right? Now, of course, when you're leveling, you're not going to have this. Assuming you have a Cloak of Defiance... Inner Conviction gives you 3% more spell damage per power charge. So with 10 power charges, that's 30% more spell damage. On top of the 30% more spell damage, let's continue this. We get to use a skill or a support gem called... Power Charge on Crit. With 10 power charges, we get... 40% more damage, which is great because support gems have been massively nerfed. So this is a fantastic way to kind of keep up with our damage. It's also important to understand that as Forbidden Right, we are going to have a very large source of damage because we are sacrificing our totem life to cast the spell. A lot of players are not sure on totem life values. So to just give you a basic understanding of a very simple template, um, on this character right here, yeah, I mean, the character is high level, but nothing is really unachievable in terms of items, not items, but like from the actual skill tree, right? So if you look here, I have like a totem cluster here. I've got the totem cluster here. I've got two medium clusters. So one is going to be ancestral preservation, which is going to give totem life and totem chaos res and fizz damage reduction. And then the same thing here. Now, with this... You can also anoint down here Ironwood, but that means you are not anointing the power charge over here. So just like this, if I go into my skills and you look at a 21 spell totem, the reason why I say 21 is we're not using Soul Mantle, so we're going to be leveling spell totems to Vault. In my Calyx, we have a totem life of 11,000 before any form of min-maxing, any form of rare jewels that are not cluster jewels. So our totem life can absolutely be scaled further. Now, the reason why this is cool is I don't have to worry about scaling life for my character. But then the question comes in is, well, you have literally no HP. So how do we combat any form of effective life? Well, this is where the effective life comes in. So as we're playing a Hierophant, we are going to mana stack in the league where mana gets dumpstered. Because stacking mana doesn't really get dumpstered. It's more of... Arcane Surge gets dumpstered, Archmage gets dumpstered, and other stuff like that. But we're not using all those mechanics, right? So Divine Guidance gives us Transfiguration of Mind, which is going to give us global damage scaling off our mana. Not a lot. It'll be like 130%. It's still pretty good, though, for a two-pointer, right? The more important one is the 10% damage taken from mana before life. So Hierophant with Mind Over Matter Divine Guidance is 40% mom. Then, with a Cloak of Defiance that we have here, we are 50% Mind Over Matter. With a Watcher's Eye, we are 60% Mind Over Matter, right? A Watcher's Eye for Clarity. And then, with 10 Power Charges, with Ireladex, we are 70% Mind Over Matter conversion. With 70% Mind Over Matter, we can have 3,000 life and just stack mana, and you're going to have like 8k plus effective life, no problem. Now, the question still stands. You have to worry about ailments. I don't have ailments figured out just yet. 
I can figure out the ailments, but this is something I'm more like, I need to play it to really see how everything feels. I need to play it to see how the survivability is, how the playstyle works. I can't fix everything in POB until I start playing the actual character. I will say, however, with Skyforths, we are stun immune, so that's fantastic. On top of us being stun immune, um, forgot what I was going to say. On top of us being stun immune, it doesn't really do anything else. Oh, but I do want to go into the next part. The next part is how we generate our power charges, because this is very important. So a big problem I have with totem builds is the following. Elemental overload or go crit. I hate those options. If you're playing an Ellie totem and you're non-crit, you have to use another skill to keep up Ellie overload. If you're playing a crit totem build, that's fine, but that just feels, I don't know, like everyone always goes crit, right? I mean, sure, I might end up going crit at some point. I just want there to be more options. Playing a chaos totem build, you have no benefit if you don't go crit in terms of like, you don't need Ellie overload. So that feels really good in my opinion, that you can kind of decide to make that option and you don't have to micro keeping Ellie overload up. So let's move on to the power charge topic. Getting this node over here is 18%. Getting this node over here is 18%. 18 and 18 is 36. 36 plus our Ireladex, which can roll up to 100% power charge duration, is 136% duration of power charges. The reason why I bring that up is because nobody wants to spam shit to keep up power charges. It's not fun, right? With this setup right here with Inner Conviction, gain power charges instead of frenzy charges. There is a beautiful skill in Path of Exile called Frenzy, and we're using a wand, which means we'll just throw Frenzy with a wand, which will probably be like Frenzy, Hex Touch, um, Despair, and either like Calling Strike or Accuracy or GMP or whatever, right? When we throw Frenzy, instead of getting a Frenzy charge, it will be converted to a Power Charge, which is fantastic, because now we have 25 second Power Charges, that we literally just have to right click a button every 25 seconds. You know, if we miss a boss, we just click it twice. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, it also can potentially call and or apply um, our despair. So this is something that I found to be hopefully really, really interesting. So I'm very excited for this. Now on the topic of power charges, I did have a word bad. My cat restarted my computer. Sorry for the flashbang. I want to go ahead and bring up what power charges give this build, right? So. One power charge is going to be 4% spell damage. On top of 4% spell damage, with our <clears throat> Void Battery, we get 25% spell damage per charge. On top of the 25%, Ireland Dex gives us 10% Mana Regen per charge that can be Catalyst to 12. So 10% Mana Regeneration. We also get 1% Mind Over Matter from uh, Ireland X. Let's do mom. Then, Conviction of Power is 3% more spell damage, and Peacock is 4% more damage, spell damage, the same thing, I think. Then, depending on how good the values are, over here, we've got 8% mana regen per power charge, and... Disciple of the Forbidden is 8% damage per power charge. I don't think it's actually... I mean, it's probably worth it. It's just really point-heavy right now. Uh, I'm most likely going to spec here and then drop AoE scaling and then just go into here because it's just so good. I was really against it at first, but I mean, I don't think I really need AoE, to be fair. Like, I don't think Forbidden Right really needs the AoE. It might. I don't know. You know, it's not that big of a change at that point. The nice option is when we end up swapping and converting to crit, we get 5% crit multi per power charge, and uh, we also get critical strike chance per power charge. Right now, this is pretty much useless, and this is pretty much useless because we're non-crit, so that kind of sucks. We also get to use the beautiful Shaman's Dominion node. All right, that has pretty much summarized everything. Um, I do want to also state, well, actually, you know, there's, there's more to talk about, but I do want to also state that with Militant Faith that we are using here, Militant Faith is the Legion Keystone that allows us to get Inner Conviction. Now, the way this works is you're going to have Dominus as your 
your main person. You've got a Varius, Dominus, Venarius, and Maxarius, right? And then it can roll two substats. So we can get area damage and totem damage. Or a nice one is you can actually get elemental ailment duration, and we can actually scale to, I think, 100% reduced ailment duration on us, which I think is awesome. The only problem with this is shocked ground will still shock us. I think that's the only downside. And maybe like beams and stuff that, that like apply ailments to you. Uh, but I just thought that it's nice to have a potential option um, for like foreseeable upgrades for like min-maxing our character. It's also important to note that I do believe Reign of Splinters is going to be a massive buff for us because it should increase the minimum amount fired. Now, going into some more kind of complicated sort of scenarios, um, with the Hierophant Ascendancy, uh, Pursuit of Faith is fantastic, right? Plus one max totem, along with totem placement speed. Ritual of Awakening, very nice. Now, the reason why Mana Stacking for Hierophant is not dead is the big nerf with Arcane Surge is if you read, Arcane Surge has... Let me just pull up the patch notes. It'll be easier for you guys. Do, 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 do. So Arcane Surge, the big thing with Arcane Surge that got gutted is this. Previously, 0.5 to 1% of mana per second. So what players would do is you would scale massive Arcane Surge effect to massively ramp up this, which made Arcane Surge pretty much one of the best ways to recover mana, uh, with the exception of a few things like Dynamo on the tree and stuff. Hierophant is such a unique ascendancy because we get 0.5% of mana per second for each totem summon. We're going to have between 5 and 6 totems. Then, Arcane Surge is now changed to give us increased mana regen, which will scale the 0.5 per totem we have, along with our Cloak of Defiance. So Arcane Surge, for the most part, is actually unnerfed for our build, with the exception of the cast speed. The cast speed loss does suck, but, you know, shit happens, right? So that's something that's pretty interesting. I'm very happy for this. Um, what I'm thinking of doing, because I don't know the links I'm going to use yet, um, is I'm thinking of actually not using multi-totem for my main skill. So I'll have three to four totems based off of if I use a Shaper Shield. And I can use a Wither Totem with multi-totem so that when I press my Wither Totem, it summons two extra totems from the multi-totem support, which will proc 10% more damage along with the regeneration while applying Wither, which is pretty cool. So I'm, I'm pretty happy for that. Now, before I end this video, I want to give you guys a backup plan because I know even though I tell you guys not to play this, a lot of you guys are going to want to play it. Uh, I do have a backup plan in case Forbidden Right sucks and has no form of scaling. Down below here, I have created a detailed leveling guide from basically 1 to the end of the campaign. If you refer to the notes section of here, it may look like a lot. It's very simple. It's basically just broken down into what you're using to level from the axe. And, and that's it. It doesn't cover endgame. Endgame will all be covered, you know, on YouTube video guides after I've played the character. So, simply put, 1 through 15, which is Act 1, you're just using Flame Totem and uh, Phantasm. 16 to 23, once you get into Act 2, you can either keep using Flame Totem or you can switch over to Stormburst Totem. I love Stormburst Totem. It's fantastic. I'm going to show you some content here really soon. For Stormburst Totem, I would personally wait until you have a 3-link. It feels much better. And then you're pretty much ready to go. So, I'm going to go ahead and just jump right on in and show you guys what Stormburst Totem looks like. This is the fallback plan if this stuff doesn't work, is going to be Stormburst Totem slash uh, Divine Ire Totems. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, or I'm just going to play another build. But for the sake of just leveling up, Stormburst Totem is great. So this is a character I made yesterday, has complete utter shit gear, like awful gear, right? Pure SSF, nothing good on this character, like not a single thing. Um... I'm just using a 4-link that's actually completely unnerfed. Stormburst gets AoE buffed in the patch. Faster casting is untouched. Fist to Lightning has a mana multiplier increase, which is irrelevant. Spell Totem gets a cast speed nerf. Kind of bad, but that's that's manageable. Uh, skill Tree is exactly as shown in the tree layout. So let me go ahead and like 
jump in and show you guys. Oops, a daisy. I'm not sure where I'm going. You guys ever play Path of Exile and do a complete 360 and go in the wrong direction in every single possible way? These are the Stormburst Totems. You basically place a totem, which casts Stormburst, and will just keep on casting Stormburst over and over and over and over again. And they are so satisfying to play. I never, ever, ever would have thought that there was a good way to play Stormburst, but man, it feels so nice to play. And works so well with literally no gear. Like, that was a rare who just died. So this is what I'm most likely going to be leveling with. Uh, just because... I mean, I will absolutely try leveling with Forbidden Right. I just fear Forbidden Right may not be very good until I get maybe my totem clusters. Of course, if Forbidden Right feels amazing, I'm not going to be leveling with Stormburst. I'm just going to, you know, jump right into Forbidden Right. I just wanted to have an option for you guys because I know the worst thing you could possibly do is, you know, take... Take the weekend off from work. Oh, well, I guess no, you don't really work on the weekends. But in case you do, you take the weekend off from work, right? Uh, I know a lot of people do. Then from there, you have like a really cool skill you want to play. And you go and start playing it. And it just sucks. And you feel like you can't progress. You know, you're, you're getting spawn killed by Kadava. That doesn't, that should not normally happen. But, you know, I know some of us are, you know, we, we need a little more help when we play. So I wanted to have an alternative option for you guys if the game was being frustrating. And Forbidden Right just was not really working out very well for you. Come on, give me my level up. Give me my level up, and then I'll go hop off. Okay, good enough. And just again, this is literally just Stormburst, Faster Casting, Fist of Lightning, Spell Totem. That's it. Nothing nothing special there. Uh, we achieve 100% conversion, just naturally, from Stormburst plus Fist of Lightning. Uh, and then we get all the juicy elemental damage here. This is why Templar works so well for Fizz conversion skills, because you have things like... Uh, Divine Wrath and Divine Judgment. Well, this one doesn't care, but it's just a good note in general. So, anyway, that's pretty much about it. I know it's not a fully fleshed out, decked out path of building, um, but I do have a little bit more to show you guys, where essentially, uh, under the items here, you can kind of just see, you know, desired items, very basic stuff I have here. Uh, rich boy leveling gear, if you make this as like a second character, um, and or budget leveling gear from Act 1 through 10, you can just see this is essentially for Stormburst. It's just very basic gear. You know, simple plus one weapons with cast speed and prefix open for spell damage. Life res on pretty much everything. And then just boots with movement speed. Um, most important thing I could tell you is use a Rustic Sash because it gives global fizz, which benefits Stormburst. All right, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. As usual, I'll drop the path of building in the uh, YouTube comments. Um, and that's really about it. So let me know what you guys are league starting as. I hope it is successful for you. And I'll catch you guys all later.